All right, man, peace. So, brothers, this is going to be Know Who You Are, Volume 2, featuring Mr. Kawhi Leonard, the current NBA champion, hopefully still of the Toronto Raptors, but possibly formerly of the Toronto Raptors. And Kawhi is basically going to lay out a certain series of maxims that he lives by, which is the reason why he's been able to elevate himself to arguably the best player in the NBA. And basically what that entails is understanding how to endure through adversity because during times of prosperity, you're going to have a retinue of people, mostly insincere and disingenuous, who try to attach themselves to you. That's why I always state that the best times of your life are when you go through adversity. I mentioned this concept in the Anthony Joshua video. It's going to be the greatest time in your life, especially if you're someone of renown or prestige, when you go through some form of adversity or a downturn in your life because it's going to reveal who is truly with you. And for the most part, you're only going to encounter outside of your immediate family, maybe two or three people who are going to be able to endure the hardships of life with you and not question exactly what's going on as long as they see you putting your best foot forward. There are going to be very few people in your life who are going to be willing to understand you outside of your field of endeavor, especially if you are able to ascend to a level of fame, so on and so forth. You're going to encounter a lot of fake people in life, no matter what you do. But you have to know who you are. That's one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, especially for the so-called black man. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. A lot of people were doubting me. Uh, you know, thought I was um, either faking an injury or didn't want to play for a team. And uh, that was disappointing to me that uh, that was out in the media. So me just, you know, going through that and, you know, I just knew that I have to make myself happy. And no Absolutely. <laughs> Brother, that's what life is all about. It's doing what makes you happy. As long as you're not breaking the laws of the most high or the laws of the land, do what makes you happy and put yourself first. Because I promise you that 99.999% of people who attempt to inject themselves into your life are doing it purely for self-centered reasons. Most people, unfortunately, maneuver according to self-aggrandizement, especially if they see that you're gifted. They're going to try to manipulate you to see how they can get you to conform to their whims. And Kawhi Leonard went through this and he endured it because he's driven from the inside, not from validation from others. Certain people who are who are driven by being validated by others, i.e. Kevin Durant or Isaiah Thomas, we see what happened to them. Else, and I have to trust myself. And um, whatever, what it, does it matter what anybody has to say about me? Absolutely. And to be quite honest with you, that's part and parcel of being a truly self-confident introvert as well. It's very difficult to be introverted in this society where basically the societal paradigm shift has been towards all access. Everyone being fully transparent with everyone else, even people that you don't know. And they will try to shame you into being fully transparent in an attempt to make you think that you're crazy for not wanting to be open with people who are not really relevant. I know who I am as a person. I know how I feel. You know, just just to be able to win this championship this year is just something special for me. Cause you know how the last year everybody was looking at me, and I stayed true to myself. And, and that's all that matters. Had a great support system, and once I got here to Toronto, they understood everything, and the move kept moving from there. Let me rewind this all the way back because I like what the brother's saying here. A lot of people were doubting me, um, you know, thought I was um, either faking an injury or didn't want to play for a team. Talking about Skip Bayless. <laughs> you know, that, that was disappointing to me that uh, that was out in the media. So me just, you know, going through that and, you know, I just knew that I have to make myself happy and no one else. And I have to trust myself. And um, whatever, what it doesn't matter what anybody has to say about me. I hope that a lot of you brothers out there, especially a lot of you younger brothers out there, 15, 16, 19, 21 years old, I hope that you're taking in what he's saying and that you fully understand the importance of what he's saying. Because if you live your life to make other people happy, you are never going to reach the highest potential of who you can be. Life is a journey, it's not a destination. And I'm not trying to purposely just speak in cliches because it is very important that you grasp the fact that our whole life is just a constant state of growth and change. 
So you have to be focused on who you want to be. And you have to understand the importance of knowing how to be by yourself. Because if you don't understand the importance of how to be by yourself, you're never going to be truly self-driven. And if you're not fully self-driven, you're going to be manipulated your whole life. And that's just a life of slavery. That's all that is. So you have to know what your purpose is, what your focus is, and what your goal is. And take time to be by yourself. Kawhi Leonard knows how to be by his damn self. And that's why the media is obsessed with trying to, to pick the lock of his consciousness. Like, oh, Kawhi won't let us in. Well, who are you to be let in? That's why every one of us, when we purchase a home or, or an apartment, we have locks on our door. Who the hell wants to wake up one day and have a stranger standing in their living room? That's why we all put up security or defenses. You have to earn the right to gain access to someone's innermost thoughts and their motivations, their dreams, so on and so forth. That's a part of the human experience. That's what it means to, to interact with someone, to get to know them. You have to earn their trust. Whenever someone approaches you and states outright, I could tell you're not a trusting person or I could tell that you don't trust me and you barely know them. You know why they're saying that? Because they're trying to shame you into giving them the access to your mind that they don't deserve. Anyone who brings up trust overtly is not worthy of trust. People who have good attributes, they understand the importance of equity. Meaning what? They have to build up good standing with you over time. That's why Kawhi stated that he was disappointed in the media because he felt like over, over the course of his career in the NBA, he, he showed himself to be someone who never cries, never complains. Yes, he's had a bevy of injuries, but he believes that he's always been upfront with the fans, with the media, and when they've needed him, he's always been there. But once they showed him that they never truly respected what he brought to the table, he was out. And that's how someone like a Kawhi Leonard is. Introverted people, if they open up to you even a little bit, and you show any duplicity, they are going to shut you out and it's going to be permanent. There is no coming back from, from doing someone who is not trusting in the first place dirty. But just to get back to the point, someone who seems to be trying to probe what your trust factor is or your trust meter is to see how they can maybe uh, manipulate the situation or utilize some form of, of chicanery or subtlety to, to gain an advantage over you, they're letting you know right off the bat that they're not someone who understands the concept of trust and they're not worth trusting at all. Trustworthy people are never going to bring up that term. They're just going to show you through their actions that they deserve to be given the opportunity to be trusted. I know who I am as a person. I know how I feel. You know, just, just to be able to win a championship this year is just something special for me because you know how the last year everybody was looking at me and... I stayed true to myself, and I had a great support system. And once I got here to Toronto, they understood everything, and the move kept moving from there. Okay, so now, brothers, we're going to pick up now with Kawhi Leonard's interview in the post game after their victory over the Golden State Warriors in Game Six of the 2019 NBA Finals. Let's see what else he has to say here. You know, you always talk about you know staying in the present, staying in the moment. And you said you didn't want to grab the ball. You wanted to keep tapping it, right? So time could run out. Are you Talk to the fans and talk to people about just how conscious and how aware and how present you are in every single moment, every single play, not getting one play ahead or thinking one play behind about what just happened. I think that's what championship uh, teams do, you know. Not just championship teams, but championship people. Brothers, we can't carry baggage around our whole life. Bad things happen to us, maybe how we were raised, certain relationships, workplace experiences, life experiences. We have to know how to let certain things go so that we can move forward and grow as people. And we've all been through bad things in life. We've all been through bad experiences. But if we don't live from moment to moment, of course, we have to have foresight and prudence so that we make better decisions. But if we keep holding on to old shit in our personal lives, it's going to trickle over. And it's going to form a network of baggage. And that's what's affecting the so-called black man and black woman right now. We don't know how to move forward, man. We keep talking about old shit that's not benefiting us. And it makes us non-solution oriented. And that's why we're at the very bottom. Because we don't stay in the moment. And we're not forward thinking enough as a nation of people. It's a major issue. Oh, um, it's not about what happened or what's going to happen. You have to stay in that moment. Absolutely. I feel like when you start thinking too much, you don't play well. It's all about reading, reacting, um, the instinct of basketball. 
I feel like that's how you get in the zone and how guys just start going on streaks and runs and hitting 10 shots in a row or your team does. And, you know, like I said, in that play, he missed the ball. I could have got the rebound early and probably got fouled with about two seconds left on the clock, but I end up tipping it to the half court. Um, yeah. Just so that time could run it out. Absolutely. And that was a tactic that was first initiated by Magic Johnson in the 1991 Western Conference Finals. I'll never forget it. Game six, I believe it was in L.A. at the Old Forum. The Portland Trail Blazers were trailing the L.A. Lakers. The Lakers were able to get a stop near the very end of the game. Magic Johnson grabbed the basketball and threw it the length of the basketball court. No one had ever seen a play like that before because the way that he threw the ball, of course, it didn't go out of bounds on the other baseline or through the other baseline. He threw it so that it would eventually lose steam around half court and it dribbled its way out of bounds and all the time ran off of the clock. It was just another example of Magic Johnson's unbelievable basketball IQ. And a lot of players have tried to replicate that tactic since then, some being successful, others being not so successful. For example, for many of you cats out there who remember, Vladi Divac tried something along those lines in Game 4 of the Western Conference Finals in 2002, where I believe he tried to bat the ball down when Shaq drove the lane, he tried to bat the ball down as opposed to, or bat it out as opposed to just grabbing it and rebounding it. And he batted it out to Robert Ory, who had a game winning three point shot. So sometimes players could be a little bit too smart for their own good, but I understand the mentality and where it came from. And because uh, I knew they didn't have any timeouts left. Like, no, I, I, know you have, uh, I was just going to say, if you can back it. Can we see the trophy wall? Uh, yeah, yeah, you show it up there, man. Uh, I'll tell you what, nobody wants to see our faces. They want to see the trophy. Now, now go, now go. Yeah, right there. No, I, I was going to say to you, you know, you look at your, look at a year ago today. All of us guys who love the NBA and love the way you play were concerned about you. You know, you hadn't played it. Well, what's the injury? How's he doing? And look at one year later where you're at. That's what it means to believe in yourself and stay the course. And for those of you who don't know, this dude right here, Kevin McHale was the single greatest low post scorer in the history of the NBA. The only player who's in the conversation is Akeem Olajuwon. But Akeem Olajuwon was just a post-up master. High post, mid post, low post. But when it comes to the low post, Kevin McHale, number one. Most unstoppable player in the history of the NBA in the low post when it comes to his diversity of moves. Now, of course, you also have Shaquille O'Neal, but Shaq, Shaq pretty much had about three moves in the low post. Kevin McHale had an unbelievable amount of moves and counters. What an amazing change in a year. Can you just talk about that? Man, it's amazing. Uh, I kept faith in myself. Um, you know, I had a great support system behind me with family and friends. And I just believed in myself. I didn't listen to anybody. That's the best thing that he stated thus far. We see him repeat that over and over again. You have to believe in yourself, especially in them dark moments, man. I know a lot of cats out there are probably going through dark times right now. In those moments, sometimes you have to spend some time by yourself, get a piece of paper or a pen, write down where you want to be, write down how you're going to go about getting there, and it will happen. It will happen. Uh, I felt the way I was feeling, and I took my time. And, you know, I didn't want to come back early and then end up re-injuring myself, and then I won't ever be the same player I, I was going to be. So, you know, I'll just made a conscious a decision of saying, you know, I'm going to make sure I come back healthy. And if I'm not the same player, I know I could be the second or best, or second or third best player on the team rather than coming back trying to be the first option early. Just the fact that Kawhi Leonard is stating that he knew that he had to take his time with the injury that he had. And within his mental framework, there were possibilities that were growing within his mind that he was not going to be the player that he was shows you how sincere he always was in his understanding of the severity of his injury as opposed to what the media and certain cult-like members of the San Antonio Spurs team were saying about him or trying to imply about him. That's how I knew that when Popovich decided that he was going to use Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili to sully Kawhi's name through the media, it was over and done. You don't, you don't just piss off someone with the, with the personality type of a Kawhi Leonard and then just go back and say, hey, you know, let's just let bygones be bygones. Everyone does not live their life willy-nilly like that. There are some people who are about what they say and they mean what they say. And if they see that you do not operate with the same level of solemnity when it comes to your word and what you say and the bond that you claim 
your franchise or your organization is about, they're out. And that's just the bottom line of it. And then come coming to be the fifth or sixth best player. So I just yeah. thought about that and that was my mindset. I didn't care about anything else but able to stand in this league for a long time at being either the second or third best player. That's that was my mindset. If I was never gonna be able to you know, be the same guy I was going to be. Right, right. Well, Kawhi, you know, you, you, you talked about coming back and you came back with vengeance. And what, what, what what's amazing to me is just how you've improved over the years. And I remember years ago, Chip England talked about how hard you worked and it had to pull you out of the gym two, three times. Well, I'm just going to say it. When you came in, you didn't have no handle like you yeah, got handle, now. Yeah, when you get that, or, or a jump. Kawhi Leonard arguably has the best handle of any three men in the NBA. I mean, it's certainly arguable. His handle is, is extremely sharp, and he keeps the ball low. Let's be honest. I'm going to pass and find open people. When you're getting your offensive game is as is, is complete as any player in the league. And just talk about the, the work and the time that you put into your game to get to this point right now. Man, uh, like you said, Chip is my guy. And, uh, you know, he instilled, he, he was a great shooting coach. And I was in the gym every day. I was doing three workouts a day, lifting. And, you know, with the, with the team I did have in San Antonio, I wasn't really able to show, show the talents that early, that early, but. And that was a major question when the San Antonio Spurs greenlit the trade with the Toronto Raptors, is was Kawhi Leonard just a system player? Remember, that's what Kevin Durant called him a few years ago. Kevin Durant claimed that Kawhi Leonard was just a system player. And it was very obvious to me, just understanding what I was watching, that he was not just a system player. And that's why I tell a lot of these guys who come in the comment section, oh, so NBA players could say this and it doesn't matter. Bro, a lot of these NBA players are just fans they self. I don't take what an NBA player says with a greater level of, of, of seriousness just because they play in the league. They have an opinion. A lot of them are operating according to their emotions and not what actually is occurring on the basketball floor. At the end of the day, if Kawhi Leonard was just a system player in San Antonio, why is it that we've never seen a player anywhere near him before emerge out of their program or out of their system? I mean, honestly, who was the best three men in the San Antonio Spurs system before Kawhi? Maybe Sean Elliott? Maybe? And he was nowhere near the player of a Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard, I've been saying, is one of the top four players in the NBA. He's been that now for the last four years or so. And he's finally getting his just due. So congratulations to him. Vich is a great coach, and you know he, he didn't make he didn't let me skip any steps. I took every step the right way. Um, Chip knew how good I was, and I just I just kept striving and having faith that one day I'll get to this point, and I won the championship today. And come on, and it was a beautiful thing watching your improvement. I'm just telling you, for all those guys who played, we talk about it all the time. Yeah. You, we... The real reason why a lot of old heads love Kawhi Leonard so much is because he plays both ends of the floor extremely hard. He has an excessively high basketball IQ, and he doesn't bitch or complain. He also does not act like some chick, some high school girl overly obsessed with social media. That's why they like Kawhi so much. When you look at Isaiah Thomas, Grant Hill, Kevin McHale, you could tell that Kawhi Leonard's the type of player that they wish they could have had on their team back in the day because they know it's not gonna be any nonsense with him. He's just gonna go out there and play He's going, to, he's going to, to perform his assignment to the utmost, and he's going to go above and beyond to make sure that he plays a winning style of basketball. Kawhi is so proficient and so efficient at what he does. When you compare him to a LeBron James, and I'll probably be doing a video about this later on, LeBron is, you know, normally shoots around 52-53% for the season because LeBron is very cognizant of where he shoots the ball from. He loves to make sure that he gets a lot of layups and dunks. He does not get as many as he once did, say, circa 2014 with Miami. But LeBron still understands how to get his shooting percentage over 50% for the season. Kawhi mostly shoots mid-range and even long-range jump shots. And he's still shooting 50%. He's extremely proficient. And he is another player in that line of Jordan-style players. I won't say Jordan-type, but Jordan-style players. But unlike most of the other players who've come before him, in between Jordan and himself, he's one of the few, if the only players, who's been able to play the Jordan style and also have the proficiency and the efficiency that Michael Jordan played with on the offensive end. 
because most of those other Jordan style players were shot jackers who normally ended the season shooting around 44 to 45 and a half percent. Kawhi is shooting 50 percent and that's normally what he shoots. We'd say we're just proud of you and the, and the work you put in. But now I got to ask you one thing that's real serious. Big question. How come you can't beat Masai Ujiri in ping pong? He told me he just wears you out. What's about that? You got to start working on your ping pong game. I know. Um, <laughs> you could tell he he been practicing or he been playing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing for fun and he'd come in there and just start hitting the ball all different type of ways. I was like, oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, regardless of what happens in the future in this year that you spent with this team and in that city can you describe how tight-knit that relationship for you with both has become in that short of time uh, it was amazing uh, I had so much fun this season um, probably the most fun I ever had in a basketball season maybe because I didn't play last year I wasn't around um, you know too many people just rehabbing with doctors and stuff but this year has been been so fun um, you know, just able to grow as a player, uh, be a part of a, a, a new team, new teammates. And, uh, I hope that he stays in Toronto because I think that it would be best for him and also for the NBA. I really do, especially for his legacy down the line. I know that playing for the Lakers is extremely seductive, but I especially believe that should he be able to encounter LeBron in the NBA Finals and defeat him, he'll understand how important that will be for how he's evaluated as a player down the line because as is, Hypothetically speaking, if Kawhi is able to win another championship next season for whoever he plays for, he's going to officially become, and I may have mentioned this in another video, one of the strangest great players in the history of the NBA. He's going to be a guy who, should he win a championship again next season, and maybe already is a first ballot Hall of Famer, and I'm not even quite sure if he has 10,000 career points. See a new country. Uh, and they just embrace me, and I, I, I thank them all for letting me come and be the player I could be. Look at that screen, and, and right how about describing that shot? That's what awaits you. Jurassic Park, man, look at it. <laughs> and that's not snow either, that's confetti. <laughs> Finals MVP on two different teams, that's not a bad list, Kawhi. Not at all, man. Not a bad list. Fantastic. Congratulations, Congratulations champion, once Brett, again. Man. We've Thank got more coming up, NBA Finals. Yes, congratulations to Kawhi Leonard. And another great example of the importance of knowing who you are. So peace.